This program is made possible by the friends and partners of Unspeakable Joy TV. I want you to take your Bibles tonight and go to the book of Matthew, chapter number 27 this evening. And we've looked last week at the prayer life of Jesus. We started on that. And tonight I want to look at another aspect of the prayer life of Jesus. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that tonight I can encourage somebody. And tonight I want to just, I don't even know about preaching. Just kindly open my soul and let you look into it. And I want to talk to you for just a little bit on how do you pray when you don't understand why? How in the world do you call on God when you don't understand what God's doing in your life? There'll be a lot of times in your life where you'll look up to the God of heaven and there's only three letters you can mention to him, why? And it's a wonderful thing when God whispers back the reason, but I'm finding 9.9 times out of 10 he won't breathe a word. I want to show you a verse in Matthew chapter 27. I want you to leave this chapter open. We'll refer to a few verses in here. But I want you to look in verse number 46. And the Bible says in Matthew 27 and 46, In about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, My God, my God, Say it with me. Why? Why hast thou forsaken me? When you come to chapter 27, you are entering the last few moments of the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. In just a few seconds, he will look up to heaven to his Father and will yield up the ghost. But before that he does that, on the cross of Christ, he will utter a prayer to his Father. Now here is the Son of the living God, God in the flesh, God in humanity. We'll look up to God, the God that spoke and worlds came into existence. The God that breathed and the sun flared in the sky. The God that spoke and in just a second, millions upon billions upon trillions of stars danced in the skies. The God that could speak and do anything Here's what he said, why? I don't think that ought to be lost on us. That the very last prayer we see uttered in the life of the Lord Jesus before he gives up the ghost, he does not tell us about how he created the earth. He does not tell us about how he bring the stars and the sky into existence. He asked, why? Whenever Jesus could have looked at the angels and called down a legion and a half in one second, he could have absolutely obliterated the world in just a millisecond. He said, why? Brothers and sisters, I promise you, if you live long enough and serve Christ long enough, there will come a time in your life when life deals to you something that does not make sense, that does not, does not equate, it does not add up, it does not make any human sense, and you'll look up to the God of heaven and you'll ask God, why? And brothers and sisters, had Jesus looked up to the heavens and said, Lord, why have you forsaken me? I would understand it right now if the black clouds would have parted like the asphalt on a hot day. I would have understood if the clouds rolled back like they will on that great resurrection morning. And the Father would have whispered out of the skies and would have said, Son, the reason that I am forsaking you is because I do not ever want to have to forsake the man and the the woman that I will save by grace. But the skies never parted that day and the clouds never rolled back that day and God never spoke that day. Jesus was left with one question. Why? 
Ladies and gentlemen, I promise you there will come a time in your life when you have the loss of a spouse and you look up to heaven and you'll say, God, why? You have the loss of a position and you'll look up to the God of heaven and you'll say, why? Something will happen in your life. Something will happen in your family. Something will happen in, with your health. Something will happen in your church. Something will happen at your job. And you'll look up to God and you'll say, why? And you'll set out to go pray and you'll get in that prayer place. That place where you found God many times. And that place where you've sought the face of God many times. And you'll get in that place and you can't find the words to pray. And you can't find the words to say. All you can ask God is... Why? And God won't answer. How do you keep praying when you don't understand the why? Now tonight, I'm, I'm not talking about people who've messed up their lives. I, I lo- I, listen, I love all people, but, but crazy people bother me. They'll act like a fool, live like a fool, walk like a fool, talk like a fool, do everything like a fool, and then want to say, I don't know why my life looks this way. You're a fool. It ain't rocket science, honey. The whys I'm talking about tonight is when there's no human explanation. It's when you cannot equate. It's when you got X. I used to hate algebra. I still hate algebra. I hate all math. In fact, my little boy the other day, he was doing some homework, and, and he was talking about arachnids and arnids and odnids and all these different bugs and all these different things. And I mean, Erica was just, she was being driven crazy trying to get him to go through all this. And I looked at him. I said, everybody just stop. Just everybody stop right now in this house. I said, son, based upon the authority that your daddy has as a preacher of the gospel, I promise you right now I don't care what profession you go in you will never use that information right there there's no one of God's green earth he will ever have to recall what he just learned and how many of you remember whenever you'd be in school and they'd give you a math equation and it would always be x plus y equals z and you had to figure out x and you had to figure out y and you had to figure out Z. Ladies and gentlemen, that is exactly what life will deal to you sometimes. You've got the formula, you've got the equations, but the pieces of the puzzle do not fit just yet. And ladies and gentlemen, there will come times when God will not give you the why. Can I give you three introductory thoughts, and I hope they'll help you. How do you pray when you don't understand the why of what you're going through? Here's what you need to write down. Number one, no matter what you understand or what you don't understand, never stop praying. There should never be a moment. There should never be a second. Whether you understand what God's doing or whether you don't understand what God's doing. Whether you can put it in shoe leather, whether you can't put it in shoe leather. Whether it all makes sense or whether none of it makes sense. Whether your family's falling apart or whether nobody's falling apart. Whether your health is on the mountain or whether it's in the valley. Whether you can get in prayer and and mention a thousand words or the only thing you can say in prayer is why. That's what Paul meant. It finally clicked to me today. What Paul meant in the book of Thessalonians when he said pray without ceasing. What that means is there should never be a situation. There should never be a feeling. There should never be a time. There should never be a moment when you stop talking to God. When you stop going to God. When you stop lifting up your heart to God. When you stop lifting up your situation to God. Never stop praying. When you don't feel like praying, keep praying. And when you get in that prayer place and it feels like God's gone silent, keep praying. And when he doesn't give you the reason, keep praying and when it doesn't make sense keep praying and when you can't find the why keep praying and when you don't know where to go keep praying and when you can't find the off ramp keep praying just keep praying just keep praying don't worry about the why just keep praying never stop praying number two here's the first second introductory statement there will be times when you do not understand that does not make you foolish That does not make you a bad Christian. That just means you're in the human race. Brothers and sisters, I promise you, if you can explain everything in your life, something is not of God. Because if you can explain God, you do not have the God of the Bible. You've got the God of your own psychology. There will be times in your journey when things happen that make no sense at all. 
There'll be things in your life, people that come, people that go, situations that fall apart, and everything is hunky-dory. And then the morning comes, and it's all gone to pot. There will be times in your life you just don't understand. There will be times in your life when you will get on your face before God and weep and wail and say, Why? Why? And I'm telling you, if you don't get this point in your head, the devil will destroy you with doubt and he'll make you feel like you are no kind of Christian. You will have moments when you don't understand. How do I know? Because on the cross of Jesus Christ, the humanity of our Lord reached out to God and asked, Why? He didn't understand it. He couldn't fathom it. Father, I know there's a reason. But why? Number three, I hope somebody will get help right here. The silence of God is not the rejection of God. The silence of God in your life does not mean God has rejected you. The silence of God does not mean that God has abandoned you. The, I feel God in my heart right now. The silence of God in your prayers when He does not answer and He does not roll back the curtain and He does not give you the reason and He does not explain the moment and He does not unveil the time and He does not give you the reason and He does not give you the why. That does not mean God's mad at you. That does not mean God's upset at you. That does not mean that you've done something wrong. That does not mean that it's all going to fall apart. The silence of God does not equal the rejection of God. Ladies and gentlemen, I remind you right now, on the cross of Jesus Christ, you do understand there is a doctrine called in the Bible propitiation. You know what that is? That is the satisfaction of God. The moment that God became satisfied that sin's payment had been paid. Do you know when it was? It was in this moment when Jesus bowed his head and died. Oh God in heaven, oh God in heaven. At the very moment that Jesus felt the most forsaken, God was the most satisfied. In the very moment when Jesus felt like he'd been abandoned the most, it was in that moment God had never been as happy with humanity since Adam walked out of the garden. And in that moment when you feel like God's gone silent and he's not giving you the why, you may be closer to God than you've ever been in all your days. It's because the silence of God's not the rejection of God. Now, there will be times when you have to pray through the lack of why. I want to give you four or five things tonight. I may not get to them all. Some of them are no good, and they're not going to help anybody. Some of them may only be for one or two people. And then some of them may help you all. How do you pray when you don't understand why? Number one, you need to realize it's okay to be upset. It is okay to be upset. Now you say, Brother Tyler, are you making that up? Well, I'm not making it up. I'm just reading what my Bible says. Notice what it says in verse number 46 of this chapter, chapter 27. The Bible says, and about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice. That phrase right there, he cried with a loud voice. You know what that means? That was as if something had risen up from the inside. It, that word cried, it literally means the shriek of a dying crow. You know that noise that a crow makes when it's flying through the air, when it's under attack, and it's, it's got that shriek in its voice. Here's what happened. Jesus on that cross, he talked to a lot of people. Ladies and gentlemen, when he looked at his mother, Mother Mary and he looked at John he looked at him and he spoke in passion but there were no loud voices when he looked at when he looked at Pilate in Pilate's hall in the Antonia fortress there were no yelling and no screaming he spoke in a still calm voice when the Jews cried crucify him crucify him he could have cried and begged God to send the legion of angels but he did not but it was in this moment when he looked up at his father you know what he did he shrieked he yelled out to God I don't believe he looked up to the heavens and he cried with a still voice. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Honey, I believe with every fiber of his being, he gathered every ounce of energy within him and he looked up to God and he cried. He screamed. He hollered. He said, oh God, why are you doing this to me? Oh God, why am I having to go through this? Oh God, 
Why is it hurting like it's hurting? Oh, God, why is the sun not shining? Ladies and gentlemen, the devil's got you convinced. You can be mad at mama. You can be mad at daddy. You can be mad at your youngins. But when you go to God, you feel like you got to throw out the these, and you feel like you got to throw out the vows, and you feel like you got to throw out the holy, holy Lord God Almighty, or he's going to strike you dead. The Lord Jesus didn't do that. He looked up to his father in the hour of his weakness, and he cried with a loud voice. He said, oh, God, I'm upset in this moment. I'm angry in this moment. I hate what sin's done to me in this moment. You can be angry and sin not. And Jesus looked up to his father and he said, God, I don't understand why. Ladies and gentlemen, it's okay when you get on an altar, get by yourself somewhere, and God's taking your child, God's taking your family, God's taking your spouse. It's okay to be brokenhearted over that thing. It's okay to be hurt over that thing. It's okay to look up to your God in heaven and have a broken heart and not understand why he's moving not understand why he's not working understand not anything in your life it's okay to look up to the God of heaven I say this all the time God's never going to be upset at you as long as you keep talking to him it's when you stop talking to him and stop coming before him that it breaks the heart of God you can cry out to God when your mama don't want to hear it no more and your daddy don't want to hear it no more and your kids don't want to hear it no more as a God in heaven you can't hurt his feelings you can't break his heart it's okay not to be okay in the presence of God it's okay asking why will drive you crazy but as long as Jesus is in the car with you it's okay you ever ridden with somebody crazy Poor old Austin refuses to let me drive. I have taken out more curbs. I have taken out drive-through cones. I have, I have, I have ripped asunder. The state DOT despises sitting my white sequoia come down the road. My poor wife, God bless her, no wonder she's got to take nerve pills. It's scary being in a car with crazy, ain't it? Sometimes Austin look at me, he'll say, slow her down, champ, slow her down, champ. <laughs> you know, you would look at Austin if he was riding with me somewhere. He only lets me drive short distances, Chick-fil-A and up to Pisgah and back. That's about as far as he'll let me go. <laughs> you know, if I'm a driving like a maniac... And you got to in this neighborhood, man. If you slow down, they'll, they'll run you over around here. You better, you better learn to get down Chinatown or you're going to get out. <laughs> Am I right about it, Scott? You've lived here all your life. You know I'm telling the truth. If I was driving like a maniac and the car was going crazy and Austin sat there and said, praise the Lord. God is so good, ain't he good? You would look at Austin and say, do you not understand what's going on? I can't help but wonder how many times God looks at us in our season of need and answer and brokenness and weariness and we sit here and say, Lord, I want to thank you for being good to me. I bet God looks at us and says, are you serious? Why would you just be honest with me? Jesus looked up to God and he said, God, I want to know one thing. Why? Why? And it so broke the heart of Jesus when he let out all that energy. You know, the very next thing he did, he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost. That's how much energy he exerted. I'm going to tell you something. I'm a firm believer in what I'm about to say. A lot of times prayer will give you energy, but when you're broken, if you don't walk away from prayer being exhausted, you probably didn't do it right. It's okay not to be okay. It's okay to be upset. Number two, whenever you are seeking God and you don't understand the why, I want to give you this. Don't be afraid to speak your heart. Don't be afraid to tell God what's on your heart. Where do I get that from? Well, the scripture says in verse number 46, Jesus makes this statement. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. 
Now, that doesn't mean anything to you, and that doesn't mean anything to me, but that meant a lot to the first century Christian. Because I want you to circle that phrase in your Bible, because that phrase is in the Aramaic. The Aramaic doesn't mean anything to you, and it doesn't mean anything to me. But Aramaic in Jesus' day was the language of the common Jew. That was the language that they learned in Babylon 500 years before. Only the religious upper echelon spoke in Hebrew when they prayed. Only the upper echelon did it. Now, if there was ever an upper echelon, Jesus was it. Jesus wasn't just upper echelon, honey. He made the upper echelon. But when he talked to God, you know how he talked? In the language of the common man. He looked up to his father and he could have spoken that in Hebrew. He could have said, Adonai, Adonai. But he said, Eli, Eli. Do you know why? Because that's the language he used in everyday life. Whenever you're asking God why, I hope that you will understand one thing. God has given you the ability to tell him what's on your heart. It is okay to get in an altar somewhere. It's okay to be riding down a road somewhere. It's okay to be going somewhere and to tell God, God, I don't know how I'm going to make it financially. God, I don't know how I'm going to make this bill work out over here. I don't know why you let this awful thing happen to my family. I don't know why you've done this right here. I don't know why you've let that door open up over there. I don't know why we can't figure this thing out. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why. Now watch this. We've got this idea that if we're honest with God, we're going to say something that's just not right and we ain't going to get what we want in prayer. Can I make a confession? I think 99% of babies are ugly until they're like six months old. I, now, not, not Jason's baby. That's a pretty baby. That's, that's a pretty baby. That's a pretty baby over there. You, you, know, you know why babies bother me that young? My kids did it too. They, my kids bothered me. Can I tell you why I didn't like my kids up till they were like six months old? Well, I like them fine now, but I'm saying like up to that. Because they would cry... And I never knew why. My wife has got this like sixth sense. Honest. Shaking baby syndrome, it can't exist because what I did to my kids, I, they made it. I'll never forget there was one night I'd had enough of Mason. I'd had enough. Now, he's fine now, so you ain't got to worry about calling the law. But, son, I wrapped him up like this. I put him in that swaddling blanket. And, son, I just said, would you please just be quiet? I couldn't take it, man. Little Randy, he just kept crying. And he kept crying. My wife comes running in. She says, give me the baby. She looks at that baby for half a second. She said, how can you not tell he's hungry? <laughs> well, I don't know, clairvoyant. I didn't get that gift at the, at the local grocery store. <laughs> There's something about that connection. That no matter how much he cried, when nobody else could understand it, Mama always was able 
to discern the cries of her child. And brothers and sisters, I remind you tonight, if all you can do is get in a place somewhere and bow on your face before a holy God and weep tears and those tears just say, oh God, why? Oh God, I don't understand why. Your heavenly Father, He knows why you're weeping. He knows why you're crying. And when people over there don't understand, and when people over there don't understand, there's a God in heaven that understands the cries of His people. Don't be afraid. To speak your heart in the presence of God. Jesus didn't care who heard him. He knew God was listening. Can I give you one? And this is going to be one. I don't know how many people this will help. But how do you pray when you don't understand why? Here's one. Just repeat what you've heard somebody else say. Just repeat what you've heard somebody else say. Jesus is on the cross. And this is what he says. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And I want to look and say, Lord, what powerful words. You know what the Lord would say? I didn't come up with that. You know why? That phrase had already been spoken in the Bible. Psalm chapter 22 and verse number 1. King David made this statement. He said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus could not think of what to say on the cross of Christ. Jesus could not figure out what to say on the cross of Jesus Christ. So you know what happened? Here's what happened. Jesus looked up to his heavenly father and he said, Lord, when I don't know what to say and when I don't know what to repeat, I'm just going to say what David said when he got in a place like this. He said, I'm just going to repeat what David said. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now here's what I'm telling you. I know how the devil operates in the heart of of a hurting saint of God. You'll, you won't have any idea what to say. You won't know what to pray. You won't know how to operate. You won't know how to pray for a loved one. You won't know how to do this. But here's what God will do. God will bring a thought that you've had in your mind. He'll, he'll bring a prayer that somebody else has prayed. He'll bring a verse to your mind. And God will let you pray that prayer over and over. Do you know how God called me to preach? It was not me bowing on my face before God saying, Lord, I am going to do this what you've called me. I didn't know how to pray. I didn't understand what God was doing. But I opened up a book and there was a verse in it. Psalm 119, 125. I am thy servant. Give me understanding that I may know thy testimonies. And when I didn't know what to pray and I didn't know how to pray, I got on my face and I just repeated that prayer over and over. I bowed on my face and I said, God, I am your servant. Give me understanding that I may know thy testimonies. I am thy servant. Give me understanding that I may know thy testimonies. Here's what I started doing. And when I can't figure out why, and I don't know what, and I can't figure out who, I just say, God, give me a thought. Give me a verse that I can pray. And can I give you one that Brother Daniel taught me? Brother Daniel said this. I'll be walking around with him praying, and he's walking around like a stand-up polar bear. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. And this is what he'd say. He'd say, I don't know what to say about him, so whatever the Holy Ghost is praying, I agree. And would move on to the next thing. What? Here's why. What did the book of Romans 8 and verse number 23 say? Verse number 32 say? What did all those scriptures right throughout there say? It said, we do not know how to pray as we all. That's why the Holy Ghost maketh intercession with groanings that cannot be uttered. The Holy Ghost right now is praying for you and he's praying for your situation. And when you don't know how to pray, that might be a good time to say, Lord, I don't know what to say. So whatever the Holy Ghost is saying, I agree with him. Beloved, when you don't know what to say, just repeat what you've heard somewhere else. Now, can I give you this fourth one? Others may misunderstand, but God doesn't. Others may not be able to understand it, but God does. I want you to notice what it says in verse 47. Of this chapter. The Bible says, Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, This man calleth for Elias. 
What happened in that was the Jews had a teaching in that day that before the Messiah came, Elijah would come. They took the scripture in Malachi chapter 3. And they thought Elijah would physically come back. And they said, here he is on the cross. He's talking to God. He's asking God, send Elijah. They were making fun of him is what they were doing. Jesus wasn't talking about that at all. But you know what Jesus did? Jesus didn't care what anybody thought. He was trying to get a hold of his God. If you're ever going to get anywhere in your walk with Christ, you will have to drop caring what anybody thinks about your walk with Christ. You're going to have to drop the opinions. You're going to have to drop the thoughts. You're going to have to drop the mindsets. You're going to have to drop all of that if you're ever going to walk with Christ. Now, here's my last one, and I'm done. Verse number 48, this may be the one that somebody in this room battles with the most. You ready? Here it is. Don't let what others say and do make you bitter. Can I show you a verse that we rarely look at? Jesus cries in verse number 46, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And now look in verse 48. When they hear him say it, the Bible says, And straightway one of them went and dipped the sponge, filled it with vinegar, and put it on a reed and tried to stick it in his mouth. Jesus is crying to his father in prayer, and the enemy is trying to fill him with bitter things. Can I tell you the hardest thing you will battle in that season of asking why with no answer from God? The devil's going to constantly be filling you with thoughts of bitterness. Anything he can put in you to ingest so that you become bitter with God. You become angry with God. You get mad at people. Problems that arise over here. Situations that arise over there. And while you're praying God why? You're praying God why? I've seen it happen a thousand times. I've seen it happen in my own heart before when you don't understand the reason for what's going on in your life. The devil starts throwing things at you. God's doing this for this reason. God is allowing that for that. And it fills up with bitterness. And he'll start making you look at this person. And he'll start making you look at this person. And he'll start making you look at this person. And all of a sudden, before you know it, you are so bitter, you can't even breathe. I am a firm believer that the people that leave the church, the majority of people that sit at home and don't want anything to do with God anymore are not bad people. They're just broken people that let bitterness in. The easiest thing to do is to get bitter. Do you know why? I'll tell you why. Because bitterness is the easiest justification for when God won't answer why. God won't tell you why, so the devil will put in, it's their fault. It's their fault. It's their fault. It's their fault. Jesus said, they put that on his lips. Jesus shut his lips. He said, I will not let anything bitter in my soul. There's somebody in this house right now. God will tell you why when he's ready to tell you why. It may not be in this life right now. It may not come until you stand in heaven. But somebody is going to have to look at the devil and say, I will not let you make me bitter. I will not let you ruin my walk with God. I will not get you to tear my nerves up. I will not let you tear my walk with Christ apart. I will not, absolutely will not. Jesus said, Lord, why? He's the only man that ever lived that never sinned. And he asked why. It's okay to ask why. It's okay not to understand. But you've got to keep walking with God. Thank you for watching this broadcast of Unspeakable Joy with Pastor Tyler Galden. Our prayer is that you have been challenged and changed by the power of God's Word. 
unspeakable joy is only able to broadcast on this station through the regular prayers and financial support of people just like you. We thank you for your faithful support. For more information, visit us online. To request the full sermon from this broadcast, call us at 833-FULL-JOY or write us at Unspeakable Joy, P.O. Box 4558, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27404. All of our sermons and other resources are available online. Be assured that God's Word has the answer for your every need, that you may rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory.